Hello everyone. In this video, I will go over the M plus output file for a latent class analysis model with a covariate. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials, usually related to structural equation modeling or latent class analysis or other multivariate statistical methods and often involving the M plus software. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and to leave a comment in the comment section for this video. So in this video, I want to walk you through the uh, key sections of the M plus output file for a model that includes a covariate of class membership directly in the model. I have a separate video in which I discuss the M plus syntax for a latent class model with covariates and you can find the link uh, to that video in the description below. So when you go to your model results section for an, a latent class or latent profile analysis or other mixture model with covariates, you first of all get the parameters of your measurement model, in this case the thresholds for the items. In this case this was a latent class analysis model that was fit to binary items and so you get threshold parameters for those um, items if you had a latent if you had fit a latent profile analysis model, then you would get the class specific means here and variances and for uh, other types of mixture models, you would find other output here first in the class specific portions. So we scroll down a little bit and then below the class specific um, parameter estimates, you find the results for categorical latent variables and that's where you will find the results of the logistic regression analysis on of class membership on the covariate. In this case the uh, latent class variable L was regressed on a manifest covariate H, H in years here and so in this case we have a three class solution and therefore we have two logistic regression equations. One class serves as reference class and in M plus that's always the last class, meaning in um, a three class solution the third class would serve as the reference class here and therefore we have only L pound one and L pound two here, two um, logistic regression slope coefficients. Not, not one for the last class because the last class serves as reference. And so that's generally the case when you have a logistic regression model, there's always one equation less than there are categories for your dependent variables. So for a three class solution, you have two equations. For a two class model, you would have only one equation and so on. And so what we get here first are the logistic regression slope coefficients. So the 0.318 and 0.066, those are the two logistic regression slope coefficients for those two equations. And so you can look at those, their standard errors and test statistics. And then in the very last column, you get a two-tailed p-value for the logistic regression slope coefficient. So you can see that the first one is statistically significant. This p-value is very small, 0 0.000, so that would be smaller than a common significance or alpha level of 0 0.05. And so here, therefore, we would say this um, logistic regression slope coefficient is significantly different from zero. The second one you can see is not significantly different from zero. The p-value is 0.258. So that shows us that there are not age differences with regard to all classes. So some um, classes are related to age and others not. So you can see that already here, or at least so say we don't have enough power to show a difference here uh, for this class. And then below that you find the logistic regression intercepts that give you the um, log odds for uh, for, for the case that the predictor variable takes on the value of zero. So in this case we have age and the value of age of zero is not so meaningful. Um, persons with zero years of age typically are not considered in studies and so in this case I centered age for that reason and then plus you can use the define command to center variables and I have a separate video on that topic as well and so I did uh, center age so that these intercepts here would be more meaningful and would give me the log odds 
for individuals uh, who are um, average or are at the average age of the sample. So that's how that is interpreted here, these um, intercepts. And then down below, you find the logistic regression odds ratio results. When you exponentiate your logistic regression slope coefficients, you get an odds ratio. And that's easier to interpret than the logistic regression slope coefficients themselves because they are, again, they, are, they give you the expected change in the log odds for a one unit change in the predictor. And it's kind of difficult to wrap your mind around what that means because it's in this log odds kind of metric. But a logistic regression odds ratio is something that is easier to interpret. We know that a um, logist, uh, odds ratio of 1.0 means there's no association between the covariate and the dependent variable. So if this were exactly 1.0 here, then this would mean there would be independence. So you can see that the second one is pretty close to 1.0 and that was the one where the slope coefficient wasn't statistically significant. And you can see that the confidence interval for the second odds ratio does include one, the 95% confidence interval, which is given here. And so the lower limit is 0.95, the upper limit is 1.197. And so this includes one. So this odds ratio is not statistically significant or is not, that indicates that there's no significant association. Whereas the, um, the first one, is significant. You can see that that one does not include 1.0 in the 95% confidence interval. So there's an age difference of some sort here. Now, of course, in order to interpret this properly, you have to know what the classes are and what your reference class is, and then you can interpret those um, more easily than you, you know what these what exactly these means. Now, if you don't like your reference class that M plus arbitrarily, so to say, or based on the starting values that you get um, arbitrarily, so to say, in M plus, if you don't like what you have as a reference class, you can look at the alternative parameterizations that are also given in M plus where you have reference class one, or reference class two. So the default is that M plus uses the last class as reference, so class three. And so for class three, we already got the results above. That's what we looked at. And then now here down below, you get the alternative parameterization where class one serves as reference or class two serves as reference. You get all the slope coefficients for those parameterizations to all the intercept coefficients and also all the odds ratio results for those alternative parameterizations as well. And that might be useful in case your reference class that um, it happens to be class three is not the one that you want. And you don't have to rerun your model with different starting values to get the solution that you want. You can instead just simply refer to those alternative parameterizations. So that's quite useful. Now, that being said, the whole thing is somewhat difficult to interpret in my opinion, um, because it's in these odds or odds ratio kind of metrics. And I personally find it a little bit easier to think of logistic regression results in terms of probabilities. I find those more intuitive. And also then I get to see all the results at once without having to think about a reference category. And so there's one very nice feature of M plus that I also want to show you in this video. And that is M plus's um, probability plot where you get the probability values estimated based on the logistic regression results for each value for each and every value of the covariate and so then you can look at that you can report those results you can plot them and so it's very nice because it makes it a lot more uh, in interpret uh, interpretable in my opinion so let's take a look at that we go to the plot option and then view plots it is the last option here. Of course, in order to get it, you have to include the plot option in the input file. Otherwise, you wouldn't get it. But you should do that anyway when you run a latent class model because you want to take a look at your class profiles to easily um, understand uh, which class is which and what the order of the classes is and so on. So when you ask for a plot of the class profiles, you also get these estimated probabilities for the covariate if you include a covariate. And then you can view this. In this case, it's age. 
um, you can change the range and stuff but we can just go with the defaults here for now and so here you can see let me make this a little smaller so you can see it um, so here you can see in this plot we have three classes and for each class we have a relationship between that class and age so at the here at the bottom you can see this is centered age so zero is the mean of the sample this was a restricted age sample that's why it only runs from negative five to uh, five about because those were um, children and so uh, there's a restricted age range here so zero would mean the average age in this case and then everything that's negative refers to children who were below average age and everything that's positive refers to um, children who were above average in age. Again, that's because I centered age for a more meaningful interpretation of the logistic regression intercept coefficients. Now, for this plot, you don't need to do that. The plot will look the same regardless of whether you center or not because the logistic regression slope coefficients and those probabilities that are derived from those slope coefficients do not change um, after centering. So they, they will stay the same if you have a model like that. You, the slope coefficients are unaffected by centering. And so here we can very nicely see what's going on. You can see that for class 1 we have a an increasing probability of being a member of this class with increasing age. So at the youngest age here, the probability is below 0.2 of belonging to class 1, but then by the end, so to say, of adolescence, the probability is almost 0.8, maybe 0.75 or something like that. So membership in this class, the likelihood of membership in this class increases with increasing age and pretty dramatically from something that's below 0.2 so only 20 percent to um, about 75 percent so you can interpret those as age specific class sizes yeah? so the age specific class sizes are very different across the age range for class 1 for class 2 we have a different pattern where initially we have more children in this class so the younger children they are more likely to be members of this class and then um, as or for a, for older children the likelihood of being member of class 2 is lower around 0.2 and it's similar for class 3 where it also starts around 40 percent and then goes down to uh, about 10 percent so that's the result, so to say, uh, in terms of probability metric. And the nice thing in M plus is that not only can you produce this graph, but also you can save all those probability values for any value of your covariate. And so you can do this by um, going to plot and then save plot data. And so now you can save a file with the probabilities. And then we can open this file. It's a simple dat file, or text file. And so here you can see the value of centered age is the first column in this file. So those are all the values that are here on the shown here on the x axis in this graph. And then the next column here, which is shifted a little bit to the right here, the next column gives you the probabilities in class one. And so you can see it starts at about 17%. So at the youngest age level, the probability of belonging to class one is only about 17%. And then at the highest age level, the probability of belonging to class one is almost 77%. So that's a pretty dramatic shift in class membership probability for different age groups. And then for the other two classes, you get the results here. So this would be class two, where initially the probability is 41% of being in that class. And then at the oldest age level, it's only 15%. And for class three, it starts out with about 42% and then goes down to 
about 8%. So I think this very neatly shows you the age effect in terms of the probabilities of class membership. You can interpret these as age specific class sizes. So this would be the class sizes at the youngest age. This would be the class sizes at the highest age. And here in the middle would be about average age. Um, and so you could either report those in a paper, in a table, or you could make your own plot that maybe looks a little bit nicer than the uh, probability plot that is provided by M+. I hope you found this video useful for um, doing your own analyses uh, with covariates and latent class and latent profile analysis. If you want to learn more about latent class and latent profile analysis, I also offer extensive workshops on this topic for which you can find the description down below in the uh, description here for this video and you can also find additional resources um, in that description. I also offer personal consulting services and you can find the link to that also in the description. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.